This is a quick start video on how to program a Svantec noise dosimeter. So this is the intrinsically safe version, the SV104IS. Uh, there is no USB connection or detector on this one like the, uh, the non-IS version has a regular USB uh, connector on here. We use this docking station. So what you'd want to do is you turn on, you hold down the on-off button. Okay, it's going to power up and we place it in the cradle. Okay, it pops into place and it'll start charging as well. So there's a USB cable that plugs into the base here. Okay, so we'll go into the software. Okay, so first thing you'd want to do is we can see up here that um, it's actually the software's recognized the noise dosimeter says it's connected in red here it's telling me that the time is not synchronized uh, with the computer so you want to make sure the noise in the, or the time in the dosimeter and date are synchronized with your computer so first you'd hit that that's if it is showing red and not synchronized um, there is some settings in here. So from the factory, there will be a uh, default setting file. So I want to move this over. So this is the instrument file. So that's in the, the actual dosimeter. This is what's on my computer right now. Um, so I want to move this over into my computer to work with it. So I move it over. Now, a good idea is to take this now because it is factory settings and we'll be playing around with it is to right click on it and hit duplicate and now i could take this either one of these um, i could take this now and rename it okay and let's just call it uh the test one for now Okay, so that's the one I'm going to be working with. Now, you can see that from the factory, they ship it with these default settings. So if you're in other countries, you know, you actually have lots of different choices here, but I'm located in Canada, and the, the main setting we use is ACGIH, which is in the third position. This is like having three separate dosimeters in one but i really like that with this pull down i can select position one which most of the results are reported uh as you're going through the reporting it favors position one or, or setup one so i'm going to move that to position one and these other two don't really matter uh, you could set them up and there's even user types of settings that you could put in there not going to really get into alarms because this is a basic setup video, but this would be set down here. So alarms for dose and things like that. In a previous video, I showed that there's a document um, associated with their manual that go into all what the meanings of these different things are. So it's, it's good to research those. So that's our first setting. Next one is our measurement. So we want to uh, have the delay start. Like, so if you wanted to, uh, you know, hit start on the unit and let it sit for, I don't know, maybe, maybe 30 seconds. You could have that delay start. Synchronization is uh, maybe we, you know, if you started, uh, it would synchronize everything to every one minute or 15 minutes. Um, so that it doesn't start on, you know, uh, not on the minute. So it's just going to make your data look better if you, if you put it to one minute. Um, integration, we, we can either have it, well, if you're doing a basic setup, probably the best thing is just to have it as infinity. So when you hit start on the dosimeter, it'll start to record and it will stop when you, when you take it off the person and hit stop. The next one down is, so we're just going to do, basically we're going to turn it on and we're going to do one measurement. There is fancier things you can do. Uh, you could set it for a certain amount of time and have it stop and report. The uh, exposure time, this is based on an eight-hour shift, but if 
for some reason uh, it was like a 12 hour shift or something like that, you could change that to 12 hours to get exposure over that time. And this would be set to both as well. Um, time set, so let's go into this next setting here. So we would have, um, let's see the basics. So actually this is a logger time here. So one second gives you very good resolution if you want to dig down into the results in it, or if there's any loud noises that happen very quickly, it would pick it up. Um, now you could slow it down if you if you wanted to, but I mean the, da the data logger inside has a lot of memory. So usually we'd set that to one second. This is where we can actually name the file. So I could name it whatever, um, just, I'll make it match uh, what I put for the settings, but it could be anything. And we turn on the summary results. So any of these things can be turned off or on. Um, now the uh, different profiles, so in profile one, we were recording everything. These other two, we really don't care that much about, but again, it's not a huge deal because of the amount of memory. Uh, we could leave them all turned off uh, or on. Um, so I'm just gonna show that. Okay, let's look at the options under the display tab. I click on this. Now these are things, basically the way that, or what you will see on the dosimeter so we've already set what it's gonna be recording, but um, we can have, and, and most of the time you would turn this on, like you'd wanna have the file information, the instrument status, like the battery and, and uh, things like that. Uh, if we're only using profile one for ACGIH, we could turn off these other profiles uh, because we're not really, really using any of those. Um, these settings here, we wanna have the main view as the is the first uh, option under view. The profile we're using is only profile one. And um, L is basically the, we wanna see the sound, but there's other things we could look at, other settings that you could look at like dose or uh, anything like that that you'd wanna put in. But usually L for sound is usually the most common. Auto off if no buttons are pressed. If you have that turned on after a certain amount of time, it will shut down and save the battery. Auto rotate if, the dosimeter is mounted in, you know, upside down or whatever, it's gonna rotate the display. Now on this other side over here on the display results, again, we're only really um, showing, like it's only gonna show you these things. Now it's recording a lot of stuff, but this is if we actually wanna look at the display on the dosimeter. When you download it, you get the option to look at all these values. But let's turn on some of them. So, uh, so we have uh, the runtime, the peak sound, the max here, uh, the minimum is turned off because we probably don't care about how quiet it is. The uh, projected eight hour dose, we could do that. Scroll down here. Could turn on the TWA. Okay. So that gives us a lot of options to see on the dosimeter. We may or may not want to even look at them on there, we may want to just download the results. So under a general tab, under calibration, the calibrator that comes with this, the dosimeter, uh, there's two different, there's a, a dual um, frequency calibrator, calibrator or a single, and the standard one is 114 dB. Uh, so we want to make sure that's set for it. These other things we're not going to get into um, this is actually maybe this one here. This would be if you want to um, have the unit when you start to, when the dosimeter is turned on to measure, if this is turned on, it will automatically lock. And there's another video that shows, but basically to unlock it, this is the sequence here. So the down, right, enter, down key will unlock it so you can start and stop it. Yeah, we're not going to get into these other options here. We'll cover them in different videos. Now what we want to do is save this file. Okay, so now we've got this test file saved on the computer under local files. I want to take this test file and I want to move it to the dosimeter. So I click that and you can see that it moved it over to the dosimeter. I select that and I would apply. Okay, so those settings we've changed in the software, everything we did under test, 
is now loaded into the dosimeter and ready to start 